good afternoon, or I should say from good evening from Iowa City. And on behalf of Misha, myself, and the rest of the cardio diagnostics team, it's a pleasure to speak with you this evening. Now, the statement that the vast majority of heart attacks and cardiac deaths can be potentially prevented was true when most of us went to medical school, and it's still true today. The question for everybody around this table, virtual table, is why? Why are we failing our patients so often? Well, the first uh, reason is quite clear. The patient has not changed. It's hard to get into the clinic sometimes to see us. And when a patient does manage to get an appointment, which often can take two, three weeks, the time the, that appointment can take a good chunk of their day. Because not only do you have to do a lipid panel, but you have a time-consuming clinical interview. As a result, patients procrastinate from getting cardiac risk screening. The other second reason why it's failing is also quite clear. The current Framingham risk score and pooled cohort approaches do not work well in the short term, especially for women. What is more, the standard algorithmic approaches that we use to elevated risk scores are formulaic. Yes, prescribing Lipitor is highly effective at addressing discrete risk variables such as elevated cholesterol, but it really doesn't get after the rest of the clinical nuances we know exist with respect to cardiac risk and affect subsequent outcomes. As a result, the patient does not understand their risk profile and can't take control of their prevention. And we're not, as physicians, we're not given the tools that we need to optimize their care. This mutually dissatisfactory result results in hundreds of thousands of preventable events and results in billions and billions of dollars of economic damage. There's hope on the horizon. Leveraging the results of tens of millions in NIH dollars to my academic consortium, Cardio Diagnostics has introduced an integrated molecular approach that captures the heritable portion of risk for heart disease with the acquired risk for heart disease that can be summarized through DNA methylation. The artificial intelligence risk calculator formulated by our CEO, Dr. Dogan, who is an expert in machine learning, summates the risk, pro, uh, risk, risk data and provides both patient and physician friendly outputs. Best yet, the science behind this is not smoke and mirrors. The fundamental studies that uh, behind the science have been published in good journals. What is more, the test that we are rolling out has been validated in collaboration with Intermountain Healthcare and will be hopefully submitted to the Journal of uh, American Journal of Cardiology's uh, journal here very, very shortly. Best yet, the methods are predicted by a labyrinth of patents, trade secrets, and copyrights. Now the first test, a physician ordered LDT is rolling out at the end of October. Epi plus Gen CHD is a tool for predicting instant risk in asymptomatic patients. Now this test is a solution that addresses two of the key pain points in the cardiac risk screening process. First of all, it fits into patients' lives. Okay, to order the test, a patient simply makes an online request which is followed up with a visit by a, uh, on, uh, via telemedicine with a physician. After the order is confirmed, a sample kit is shipped to the patient and returned to our CLIA certified partner. After processing by the AA algorithm, content tailored reports are sent both to the physician and to the patient, which details the results and offers therapeutic insights. Best yet, as opposed to the current technology, this test simply works better. It simply predicts more events than the currently poorly sensitive Framingham risk score and pool cohort equations. Over a three year risk window, our test has nearly 80% sensitivity while maintaining 75% specificity, which provides us with an unparalleled opportunity to work with our patients to prevent what was previously unpreventable. This is a value proposition, okay? We're initially offering this test at $350. However, 
since the test is over a three-year risk window, essentially a three-year risk assessment. And as clinicians, we know that things can change rapidly over a period of months or years, and their biology changes in that same period of time. We're recommending repetition of testing within three years. Now, initially, like all LDTs, the tests will be out of pocket, but it'll be eligible for both SSA and HSA patients. Best yet for the people in this room, as opposed to a boutique test, which you know it hits a rare disease, the market opportunity here is huge. The service obtainable market is $6.2 billion annually, with COVID-19 making more and more patients comfortable with the telemedicine care that this test can leverage. The real question is, why now? Why now for this AI-based epigenetically informed test? Well, first off, because the epigenetic-driven technology is here. But in addition, there's increase in awareness by consumers to the value of prevention. Furthermore, secondary to COVID-19, you guys have probably heard about that before, Telemedicine approaches to implement the, uh, our approach are not only here to stay, but they're going to become more and more common. What is more is COVID-19 may have some cardiac complications, and that is increasing people in understanding the value of prevention. Next, the introduction of epigenetically informed tests, such as Prologard, is educating both the clinician community and the, the lay community in the value of epigenetic tests. But most importantly is we have surveyed physicians like the people in this room, and they have overwhelmingly told us that this type of product is needed. Now, to be sure, there are competing technologies out there for screening heart disease, but none of them, none of them check all the boxes that are needed to survive in the coming environment and we believe that our approach will eventually capture the most lucrative portion of the cardiac risk screening uh, market. The best part about cardio diagnostics is the team. And I think we really should spell cardio diagnostics with two T's. Now, the first T would be for technology. And I assure you, our methylation sensitive digital uh, uh, technology coupled with AI is state of the art. I encourage you to read the articles. But the second T in cardio diagnostics would be for team. And I really, really believe in our team, okay? I'm a board certified NIH clinician. Unfortunately, I'm not a uh, cardiologist, I was put in the advertisement. I'm actually an inpatient psychiatrist. But I did hang out in the basement of the Human Genome Headquarters for six years, and I have 15 years of experience in clinical epigenetics. I personally invented many of the technologies I will use. But it really, this company could not have happened without Misha Dogan. Misha is a biomedical engineer who specializes in machine learning approaches. And during her thesis, she invented the integrated insights for us using AI and integrated approaches to assessing risk for complex medical disorders. Misha and another PhD level machine learning specialist get it. They get it about the coming frontier of medicine and they will drive the future of our AI-based company. But they're not alone. Our CFO is a graduate of the University of Chicago School of Economics and is a veteran in financing startups. Our pathologist is a fellow survivor of the NIH intramural program and a board certified molecular uh, pathologist. Our advisory team is equally impressive. Dr. Iftikhar Kulo, is a well-known Mayo cardiologist and researcher. Dr. Jim Schneider is an expert in reimbursement strategies. Dr. Chicha Edwin, Edwin is our regulatory consultant at Covance. And Kulani Abdullahi is leading our digital go-to-market strategy. We're nailing our, our, our landmarks. Our first patents, for these technologies, for the entire cardiovascular technologies, not just cardiac screening, but the entire pan, uh, panorama of cardiovascular risk were filed in 2016. And best yet, we got our notification from our patent attorney at Fish and Richardson that she expects the first European claims to issue later this year. 
and the first U.S. claims to issue next year. In 2018, Robert, time check. Mm -hmm. Okay, we formed a partnership with uh, um, Intermountain Healthcare and made a key platform presentation at the American Heart Association meeting. In 2000, this recently, we've uh, the test Epi Plus Gen completed its clinical validation tests and will come out in October. And then after the blood-based test is on its way, we're going to focus our energies in getting the saliva base. We've raised uh, uh, $350,000 from friends and family, and we've obtained uh, phase one SVIR funding, and we're going to, we've applied for getting still more. And best yet, because of our low burn rate, the amount that we've raised will ensure market risk and a fair amount of marketing presentation. The presentation we're giving today is part of a $1.5 million ask whose proceeds will be due to help launch the saliva product and accelerate market capture. Finally, where are we going? Well, I would love it if we became the Amazon of healthcare, but the likely fate of cardio diagnostics is for it and its valuable IP to be acquired. One particular customer might be somebody like CVS, Aetna, integrated healthcare systems that could use the, uh, the test in their uh, primary care operations. Still a second are large corporate testing corporations such as LabCorp and Quest which have global reach to grab more customers and can use their proven tech uh, approaches in driving down testing costs to increase profit margins. Finally, as many of you in the room may, may realize, our AI biomarker approach could generate deep insights into medication design and response monitoring. As such, we're engaged in conversations with several large pharma. In summary, thank you for your time today. I believe that cardio diagnostics is a transformative opportunity based on rock solid science. I believe in it and I believe the team we've assembled. Let me know how I can get you on board. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Robert. We have a lot of questions here. So I'll have you, Yuli, go through those questions. Go ahead, Yuli. Thank you, Robert. Um, so, uh, one of the questions is you know, what is the business model? You know, who is going to pay for it? And how do you make money? Okay, so initially the, the customers are going to be, we're gonna acquire our customers through uh, uh, digital marketing and the, it'll be out of pocket. However, we've got a reimbursement strategy. Uh, we've got our CPT codes uh, identified and we've got our, our billing uh, systems uh, in negotiating for setup. So will the test be done before they see the doctor or after they see the doctor? Essentially, you order, you you request the test online, fill out the request, the test will be ordered, and then when the test uh, the test results re uh, results are released, the physician will see them first, and then release them to the patient during the visit. I see. I think one of the good question is, uh, will you be uh, concerned that the patients are getting the results before they speak to their doctor? They won't get them before they see their doctor. The te the, really? the physician will release them. A telemedicine. Just like every other lab test. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you predicting the event or are you predicting the disease? We're predicting risk for an event in asymptomatic patients. Okay. Now down the line, we're going to be working on a test for prevalent heart disease. So if you think the incident risk for heart disease is, you go look in those articles and we've shown how you can do, you can generate a test for prevalent heart disease. And that is going to be a complete market disruptor. There is a specific uh, question, looks like. Uh, what's the status of your phase one SBIR grant? Do you anticipate being granted phase two grant? And if so, why fundraising 1.5 mm now? Very specific. It's, it's dilution free equity. You know, why not? So we've got phase one funny. We're, we're getting in the process. We've got a couple more in. I, you know, if you were on the review committee, I'd love it, but it's dilution, it's equity, for, it's dilution free equity. I'll take 2 million from the feds and still do the product, take money from others to do it. It'd be a, you'd be a fool to turn down the money. Good question. You, you have, you have any last question? Um, yes. Um, so who is your ideal patient? Is it somebody yeah, who walks into the emergency or is somebody who is, uh, you know, an employee at uh, Google? That option B. So you get it. 
So the, you know, the real, the market here is for large companies that value their employees and are asymptomatic now, and they want to keep them asymptomatic in the future. This is not a test you do in the emergency room. You're coming in with, a, with, uh, with cardiac disease. I'm sorry. You're going to get a, a, a coronary CT, something of that nature, hopefully not cath. But the, this is not an acute test. This is a test you take for asymptomatic screening. The prevalent heart disease test we'll be working on the future is a, yet another, another test, um, but it also will not be a test for acute events, risk screening. There's one Thank last specific question, if I may ask. How many SNPs are being analyzed? Are you able to add more for V2? What is that? <laughs> you, oh yeah, the, version 2, I would assume. Okay. And the answer is, so the, the current algorithm uses five. And yes, we can put in as many as we need. You know, the, obviously you can tailor the test to capture certain aspects of risk. But what the, 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 SNP, the SNPs are there primarily for is capping the genetically contextual epigenetic responses. There's a reason why this technology didn't work. And the reason is genetic confounding. Through the machine learning approaches, we overcome that and measure the, epi, the epigenetic uh, responses and textually testing. with your genetic testing. background. Great. Uh, thank yeah. you very much, okay. Robert. Thank you.